Eyes as you are as Melissa leads us. about this just for a moment go ahead and have a seat because you're going to be up on your feet in, a, in another second here but i want to share some things with you those who are online those in person 
to let you know uh, that the June food collections have started already for the Thanksgiving and Christmas food baskets. The items that we are collecting are pasta or spaghetti noodles, whichever you bring in, there will find a place for both of them. Uh, spaghetti sauces, uh, cake mixes, and frostings as well. Those are the items that we're collecting throughout the month of June. Those of you, as you walked in, you saw that there was an additional sign up this morning. Those of you who are receiving my emails regularly got the link to the sign up sheet last night or this morning, whenever you looked at it. Uh, there is a sign up sheet to participate in one week, one street for food collection. We are preparing a lunch for all of the volunteers at one week, one street on June 21st. That is the first day of One Week, One Street. We're partnering with Auburn United Methodist Church. Karen, who's sitting in the back, those of you who don't know Karen, Karen, if you could pick up your hand and wave back in that corner. That's Karen McDonald, everybody. Say hi, Karen. Karen is our point person for that. If you want to know more, uh, we can get her number to you. But if you're here in person, if you're somebody who likes to bake cookies, we want you to sign up so we know how many cookies are coming. They're scheduled or listed out by 50 cookies each. Uh, so if you can sign up for cookies or cheese slices like craft singles, um, there's bologna options, there's turkey or ham options. I can't remember what else, chips. Uh, there's other items on that list. Go check it out. Uh, if you have email, you got the email last night to go sign up as well. All of those items need to be here at the church on Father's Day prior to worship. Following worship, we'll be taking some time to hopefully cut the celery up and bag the carrots and celery together. So when it comes time to pack the lunches on Monday morning with Auburn and the district youth, that that's one less thing we have to worry about. If you're somebody who would like to come on Monday morning, the 21st, to help pack, we'll be here at the church mask, socially distanced, you know the drill at this point. Um, we're going to do it the best that we, way that we can to keep everybody safe as we pack those sandwiches, as we make them and pack them and then send them off to the work sites. We'll be gathering here at the church at 9 a.m. There will be some teens from uh, Mount Pleasant first and St. Charles that will be here to help prepare those meals as well. If you'd like to participate in that, I'll invite you to reach out to me or to Karen so we have an idea of who to expect and how many appropriate things that we need to have in order for you to assist with. And it might just be helping the youth along and keep them focused because we all need a little extra focus these days, right? Um, so know that those opportunities to serve are, are here for you to engage with in ministry this is our focus for our 175th year celebration component this year as we continue to celebrate ways that we are in mission and ministry to our local community and beyond. So come be a part of that. If you know somebody who would like to be a part of that in our congregation or community, invite them along for the journey. This is not just those of us who are gathered, it's all of us together doing Christ's work in this world. Uh, you can also volunteer that week at One Week, One Street. And I'm going to point to Walt because I know Walt has done it. Everybody wave at Walt. Hi, Walt. Good to see you. If you don't know who Walt is, he's over here. Um, and he will be there throughout the week. I don't know how many days he's committed to, if he's committed all week or just for a couple of days. But if you want to know what kind of projects that Walt has previously worked on, he's a good person to talk to. Some things also include pulling weeds. It includes scraping paint. It is sometimes gutting houses, depending on what the needs of the community are. Walt can help you point, point you in the right direction, Karen, myself, or I will say probably Heidi, other missions team people, Heidi or Patty Turner as well, or Betty, uh, Betty Dork as well. All have that information. We'll try to get that address out to you here inside the church. It's in your emails as well, but it'd be great to have you come be a part of that. Today we are doing communion, and if you are online with us and would like to receive elements, I will be at the church until one o'clock today distributing those. 
outside of the church, I'll be inside, but I'll be on the lookout. So if you would like to come and receive the elements, you're welcome to do that until one o'clock today. Um, and then the other thing that's been going on the last couple of days is annual conference. This is like the big church meeting every year that happens where all of the clergy gather yet again differently this year. We did that digitally uh, for the second year in a row due to the pandemic. And uh, the good news is, is that I'm here to uh, I'm here to be with you another year to serve you and walk with you as we continue forward for another year in this community celebrating who we are, who God is calling us to be as Freeland United Methodist Church. That's the big highlight. There will be other news elements that I'll share with you over the course of the next week of what happened. And I'll try to print those reports so that you can have access to them if you're interested in that type of thing as well. Um, those of you on missions team, we will be gathering on Wednesday at 2.30 here at the church and 175th committee or we said the parsonage I think because it'll be shaded <laughs> uh, stay tuned on location 230 missions team 175th is 430 location dependent upon weather uh, so that we can be outside and enjoy the weather and have quieter quieter atmosphere than the road traffic outside uh, those are the announcements that I have to share with you this morning. I invite those of you here in the sanctuary to rise as you're able. We will join together in the call to worship, and then we will unite our voices together, being led by Melissa as well, following that. People of God, enter this place with thanksgiving and praise. Come and rejoice, sing glory to God. Remember the steadfast love of God endures forever. Again, remain standing as Melissa leads us in blessed assurance.
And as you do so, I invite the young people to come forward for a word with me this morning. I have a story for you. Come on up. <laughs> All right, you're excited. I'm going to have you stand up, though, because you guys can get some wiggles out while we do this. Hi, sweetheart. You coming up, Mira? Oh, hold on. Those are communion cups. Oh, come on. Here, well, you'll get one after church, okay? Come here. I'm going to show you a story. I've got a story for you today. It has a rainbow, but what, what shape is this? What's a epiphany? <laughs> here. What shape is this? Can't look down. A heart. A heart. Can you make a heart with your hands? Make a heart with your hands. Can you do that like this? Make a heart. All right. Heart. We're gonna, I'm going to read you the story. Can you listen one second? Let's, let's hear. You, there is a rainbow, but we're going to see each of those pages as we go, okay? All right. It says, in my heart, a book of feelings. Do you know what feelings are? What are feelings? Feelings that God, what? Can't, I need help, big sister. I don't know what you're saying. What are, what are feelings, David? Help sister out. There are things that you're feeling at certain times. So what's, what types of things are feelings? Sad, happy, excited, mad? Or what, what faces do you make when you're happy? Can we use, when you're happy, what do you do, Epiphany? If you're happy, do you do this? You get all excited and you can you smile big. Can I see a big smile with your eyes? Right? And your dance. You're going to entertain everybody today. I love it. Hold on one second. Come here. Come here. Come here. And if you're angry, can you show me some angry eyes? What do you do when you're, what do your eyes do when they get angry? Ooh, we, we clench our fists when we're angry. Is that true, mom? We clench our fists when we're angry. <laughs> Mira, what do you do when you get angry, when you get upset? You do this? It's probably legitimate right there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a red face. Um, how about excited? When you're really excited, what does that look like? <laughs> can you tell me a joke after church? Okay, let's, tell, let's, let's read our story. Do we think we can read our story? Okay, let's listen to the story because it's a book about feelings. And then we'll talk about how, do you think, let's read the story. Come on, pastor. All right. My heart is full of feelings, big feelings and small feelings, loud feelings and quiet feelings, quick feelings and slow feelings. My heart is like a house with all these feelings living inside. All these feelings live inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes my heart feels like a big yellow shiny star, shiny and bright. I smile from ear to ear, right? Big smiles and twirl around so fast. I feel as if I can fall off into the sky. Can we twirl? Let's twirl, twirl without getting dizzy and falling over. This is when my heart is happy, is when we're happy and twirling like a bright, shiny star. <laughs> Other times, my heart feels strong. I stand up tall. Can you stand up tall for me? Mira, can you stand up tall for me? You feel strong. 
as if I can touch the clouds. Can you touch the clouds? Reach up, touch the clouds with me. Come on. Oh, all right. New people and places don't frighten me. I can do it. Watch me go. This is my when my heart is feeling brave. When I get really angry, my heart feels as if it's going to explode. Do you feel like that sometimes when you get upset? that your heart feels like it's going to explode. My heart is yelling hot and loud. That is when my heart is mad. But other times my heart is cool. I bob along gently like a balloon on a string. Can you bob along with me? It can bob like a string. Yeah, okay. We're <laughs> my heart feels lazy as slow, as quiet as a snowfall. This is when my heart is calm, when you bob like a balloon and float along. On harder days, mean words hurt my feelings and my heart feels hurt too. It's fragile and delicate and it can be healed with extra kisses. <gasps> Do you get healed by extra kisses from mom and from dad? Yeah, I bet that works pretty good, doesn't it? This is when my heart is broken broken. So we're sad. Some days my heart feels as heavy as an elephant. Oh my goodness. Elephants are so big and, and giraffes. And there's a dark cloud over my head and tears fall like rain. This is when my heart is sad. Come here. Yep. Let's leave those. You'll get one after church. I promise. Okay. All right. But my heart doesn't stay sad. Like springtime after winter, what happens after winter? What happens after winter? You play outside, but what happens when the snow melts and the sun comes out? The sun melts the snow and the grass starts turning green and the flowers start growing tall and reach for the sky, don't they? Your high heels still hurt. I bet your mom can help take those off for you in just a minute. But that's when your heart is hopeful because you know new beginnings are happening. Eek! When I see something really scary, is that scary like a monster? Do you see it? This is scary. What happens when you're scared? What kind of faces do you make when you're scared? Do we hide? We hide? My heart beats fast. Do you feel like you're stir crazy? You get anxious, your heart beats fast. Maybe you feel cold as if a chilly breeze has crawled up my neck. Yep, and I run away as fast as I can. This is when my heart feels afraid. When it's time for a bit of fun, my heart feels full of giggles and wiggles, like just like we already are, full of giggles and wiggles, right? Abracadabra, I hop along like a bouncing bunny. Can you hop with me? Come on, David and Vanessa. Lots of energy, you can jump really well. I hop like a bouncy bunny. This is when my heart is silly and happy. Sometimes I hide my heart away where no one else can see like my own small treasure. Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they? <laughs> we'll talk after church. Okay, <laughs> she wants to share the whole world. I love it. Sometimes I hide my heart away where no one can see it, like my own small treasure. I don't want anyone to look at me safe on my swing. I can watch in the world, watch the world from up above. This is when my heart is shy. We'll make music in just a little bit, okay? You might need some assistance. <laughs> My heart can feel so many feelings and yours can too. Today, my heart is proud. How does your heart feel today? Good? How does your heart feel? Calm? Good? Mira, how does your heart feel? You might feel shy. That's okay. That's all right. So we can feel all of these things. Do you? I wonder, do you think these feelings come from God? Yes, that's a good answer. Yes, these feelings come from God. Do you think that it's okay to share these feelings with God? Yes, absolutely. Do you think it's okay to share these feelings with other people? 
Yes, of course. If we can share with God, then we can share with other people. So when we're angry or upset with people, we can share that and say, I'm not feeling the greatest today. It's because it's off. <laughs> all the things today, all the things. So we can share our emotions and we can share them with God. How do we share them with God? We pray. Should we pray right now? Let's pray. Can you bow your hand, head and hold your hands together? Let's pray. Church, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for all the abundance of energy and joy that we have this morning to come and worship you with our happy hearts, our calm hearts, and our shy hearts. God, help us to know always that we can bring our emotions, all of them to you, even when we're upset and when we're joyful. God, help us to remember that you are always there for us to listen, just as all of these people have here in this space are as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seat. So good to have you with us. You'll get those in a little bit, okay? You have to wait patiently for them. <laughs> go back with Sissy. All right. Whew. Lots of energy. Are you going to hang out up here? <sighs> We have two scripture lessons today, and I invite you to hear these words. The first comes from David, the Psalms, book of chapter 138. Hear these words. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down to your whole, toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. The, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you persevere me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, verses 13 through 5, chapter 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believe and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the, the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in us, and for the word of God around us, we say, Thanks be to God. There's an old story about a disciple and his teacher, a story that Paul, the Apostle Paul, may have liked. And it goes like this. Where shall I find God, a disciple once asked. Here, the teacher said. Then why can't I see God? 
because you do not look. But what should I look for? The disciple continued. Nothing. Just look, the teacher said. But it what? Anything that your eyes alight upon, the teacher said. But must I look in a special way? No, the ordinary way will do. But don't I always look the ordinary way? No, you don't, the teacher said. But why ever not, the disciple pressed. Because to look, you must be here. You're mostly somewhere else, the teacher said. You're mostly somewhere else. You're mostly somewhere else. Hmm. My calendar sometimes is so full that I don't have enough time for my family and my friends. When will I find time for vacation? I need to go to the grocery store to get more food because nothing that I have at home sounds good. Even though I have plenty to make dinner with. Does this sound familiar? Some of us sometimes. You must be here, the teacher pressed. God's give, God gives us all the same number of hours each day. I wonder if we start our day with the creator each moment every day. Do we start by saying good morning, God, and spending time in scripture? Am I centering myself in the goodness of God instead of the desires of my world? You're mostly somewhere else, he said. I need more money in my bank account to pay for the things that I desire. I should put the extra hours in at the office. Maybe my boss will see me and my good efforts and reward me. My boss is constantly giving me more and more to do and the job that helps to pay my bills, maybe even that next vacation and maybe working these extra hours will help me save for my next car, my next house my next toy that I want, my next dream vacation. Are all of my debts paid? Maybe I'm up to my eyeballs in debt. Am I wanting something more over and over again? A new television, new furniture, new shiny sparkly jewelry. And again, we hear the words, you must be here to see God? So am I giving to Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God's? Am I trusting that God will provide for me even when I feel the world is crashing upon me? Are the gifts I give to God indicative, reflective of the relationship that I have with God in my personal life? And are they reflective of the hope that I have in life eternal? We hear the words again, you're mostly somewhere else. What will they say? What will, will they hate me for what I, for doing for what I know is right? Will I be taunted, teased, persecuted? Will my image be destroyed? Will I be left all alone, my family ignoring me? And again, the teacher says, you must be here. You are a child of God, friends. You do not need, you do not need to win the affection and love of others through your actions. You don't need to win that from God at all. It's already given. God loves you just the way that you are. You need not make face for God or for others or pretend that you are someone that you are not to win people over. That's not the way of God's kingdom. You already have God's love. What more do you need? 
if our mind is on the things of eternal. How will you stay here in order to receive and experience it? And again, we hear the words, you're mostly somewhere else. I don't know about you, but my body is failing. I'm falling more than I used to. My memory is failing me at times. I'm eating out more because I've missed it this past year. I've put on unnecessary weight, some of us. Perhaps I'm not caring for the vessel that I've been entrusted to by God. Our blood pressure is higher. We're stressed out. We don't take time to breathe. We're too busy running from one task to the next to make others happy. And again, we hear the words, you must be here. We hear the psalmist say, be still and know that I am God. And we hear David echo, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Two human things that we know to be true. We are born and then we die, right? Everything that happens in between these two times of living and dying is a gift from God. Each moment of every day is a gift. The way we live out these moments in between is a testament to our faith in God. To what God is doing in us and the hope that we cling to through our faith. And that hope is not found in things here in this world, in this church, in our homes, in our society, but that hope is of things eternal. Resurrection and new life that is found in Christ alone. But you're mostly somewhere else. Other churches are opening fully. We know this to be true, right? Some don't have restrictions anymore. Taking, some are taking their masks completely off, letting people sing with loud voices, shaking hands, getting back to the way things used to be. But some are not returning, even though all of those things seem to be happening. Some of them are not returning, even though we are following safety procedures. Some say that people, if we open our doors wide open and let everybody in, that people will come. Kind of reminiscent of if you build it, they will come. You know that movie reference? If you don't, I'm sorry. It was a favorite of mine growing up. Some have found other rhythms on Sunday morning to fill their time, other priorities to fill the space because initially they weren't fans of online worship. So the placeholder has been removed. We must move now, some say, or it will be too late. And again, we hear the teacher or God say to us, you must be here. Be still and know that I am God, my child. Trust in my goodness, and I will never leave or forsake you. Shall we look around the congregation this morning, friends? Look at those seats. Think of the people that are not with us today. And how each of us, each of you and you, are a part of bringing them back into the body of Christ, inviting them, encouraging them, reminding them that we are here doing the work of God in this space and throughout the week, and that they are an intricate part of that. We choose to, yes, continue to follow these safety procedures. This is all temporary. We're getting there. We're getting closer and closer to coming back to whatever the new normal will be. But we just got to remain a little more patient. It's temporary. Our focus on this temporary right now is on the things eternal. 
We want to care for our neighbor. We love our neighbor as we love God. And our way of doing that is continuing to practice these things. How we function as a church demonstrates this truth and how we live it from the core of who we are as Christians, loving our neighbors, the ones we know and the, love, the ones that we don't know. And again, that line resonates with me that the teacher said, you're mostly somewhere else, but you must be here. How often do we find ourselves distracted by so many things of the world, our wants, our desires, our bodies, and our minds that can no longer function as they once did. Things temporal that we want control of today in this moment. We want it all to be perfect and as it should be as it once was. But this passage reminds us that we simply cannot control any of it. This passage reminds us that the human statuses, the worldly possessions that we have in this moment right now, including our bodies, are temporary. Paul's point is that at some point we all die. That in time, everything of this world, everything of our outer nature will crumble and perish. Our bodies, our jobs, images that we portray to the outside world, cars, finances, politics, titles, status, and power that we have. These are all outer nature things that are a part of the external world. The inner nature that he steers the Corinthians and us to find our hope in is resurrection and new life in Jesus Christ. These are the things that are eternal. In Paul's letter to the Corinthian community, he reminds them that God is working inside each of us through Christ's resurrection. We are being renewed each day. This doesn't happen without work, though, church. We must stay present to God's very nature. Excuse me. We must remain here. We must continue to praise God, to remember that God is in us and is all and above all. That God is where all of our gifts are from and where we are to return a portion of our gifts. That God is a forgiving God, and so we're called to forgive our neighbor just as God forgives us. And in doing all of these things, we experience life abundant in Christ, through Christ, with Christ in this world. Life that helps us navigate our worldly burdens because we first fill up our cup with God. And we remain present in the now instead of deterring our attention to somewhere else, what someone else thinks or wants of us. We stay rooted and grounded in what God wants for us. And being here and now, God continues to provide new opportunities for us to, to encounter God in the world through our inner lives. Friends, the resurrection of Christ renews us from the inside out, not the other way. We have to do the inner work. We have to go to God first. For constantly somewhere else worried about something else, how are we being renewed in the likeness and resurrection of Jesus Christ? I wonder what our lives may look like if we don't worry about these worldly things, but focus only on these things eternal. What might look differently in the week ahead for you if you took this effort seriously, or maybe in a new way this week? How might you be a part of God's kingdom resolving inequities, providing food to the hungry, clothes to the naked, listening to the inner voice of God working within you to embolden and empower you to share God's love with the world. Do you hear God's voice nudging you, calling you to come in, to stay here, to experience God in the innermost parts of who God has created you to be? Let us pray, friends. Good and gracious God, thank you for this reminder. The reminder that you are found in the here 
when we so often are worried and distracted by somewhere or something else. Help us to turn inward, to be in the here, to encounter you, so we may be filled and empowered to share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What song do I have next? Because I wrote Blessed Assurance twice in my notes. Yep, that's perfect. Come to the table. I didn't, thank you. I am excited to update all of you. Helps when all of the notes sync up well. Please rise, friends. Come to the table is on the screen for you to join with.
be seated. We're quickly, I think, coming to a time where I'm hoping to put the pieces of paper back out for you to start writing prayer requests to share with me. I feel like I've shared the same three or four every time, and they are still just as vitally as important to be holding in prayer, but I'm not necessarily getting those prayer requests as I once would prior to worship. So look for those in the weeks ahead. A reminder that if you have something that you would like me to lift to the body to see me before worship or bring it on a piece of paper to hand to me, uh, those are other ways that we can do that or call me earlier in the week and say this is something that you'd like to have shared on Sunday. A reminder that you can do all of those things. This morning I want to make you aware that on Wednesday, I had the great blessed joy of leading two baccalaureate services over at St. Agnes for our graduating seniors at uh, Freeland High School. A gift, a blessing, a celebration really and truly of the students' talents. We celebrated a soccer game win that uh, the, the school had, there was softball wins and track, lots of good things that are happening in our community that we can celebrate with our students. And remember those who are graduating near and far. It's a wonderful blessing, even though, yes, still a little bit different, but one step closer again to being normal as they graduated on Thursday on the football field other things that we can continue to lift are for the Collier family, for especially Katie, who's receiving treatment for cancer. For those who continue to wrestle with COVID in the midst of this time, for the illnesses that they fight, for the, the after effects that they still have, for those who are working the front lines, for those who have lost loved ones. And for those who continue to wrestle with familial challenges, those who struggle with addiction, Chris Ducharme was in and out of the hospital this week, not linking the two of those things at all, I'm sorry, uh, but she just popped into my head. Chris Ducharme has been in and out of the hospital a couple of times in the last month now. And I offer her to you for prayer as well. That's gone out through the prayer chain a couple of times now, but those who are not on the prayer chain may not know that. So we continue to lift her for comfort, for whatever is going on inside of her that the doctors can't quite pinpoint. For those of you who are wrestling with pains, with things that are not quite as it used to be, bodies not functioning the way they once did. These and all the things that remain upon our hearts, we turn now to God for a word of prayer together as one body, one voice. Let us pray. God of creation, you set in us a verdant place and gave us everything needful for abundant life. Yet we have marred your good creation. We pray for the renewal of creation as we seek to live more responsibly within it. Make us better stewards than what we have yet been of water, soil, and air. Teach us how to live in ways that honor the habitats of every living thing. Loving God, we have also marred human relationships by emphasizing our differences and disagreements at the expense of our commonalities and connections. We pray that you will give us new understandings and ways of living with one another doing the slow work of peace rather than turning to the quick response of war, receiving our various languages and colors as enrichments rather than deficits, caring for the least and the lost, not as unwanted burdens, but as welcome companions in your great household. Renewing God, we know so well that human life is fragile. We see in our own bodies how illnesses and infirmities afflict us. Because you shared our human life, we come before you asking for healing, recovery, and an end to pain and suffering. Within our community, we remember before you those in need of your care and of ours. Within our own families and circles of friends, we lift up the names of people in pain. We 
We give thanks for the skills of doctors and nurses and healthcare attendants. We pray for researchers who dedicate themselves to seeking new treatments and cures and procedures that en enhance our health. Strengthen all caregivers, oh God, with the gifts of kindness and patience and endurance. We are grateful, oh God, that though our bodies fail us, you renew us spiritually day by day so that we never outlive our usefulness to you. No need, no person is ever hidden from you or beyond your reach to save. Remember those, O oh God, who we have overlooked this day, those whom we have forgotten or forsaken, and those who have wandered away from you. Restore them, we pray, and restore us too, until we are all your family again. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we have come today to give praise to God and to say thank you for all that God has given us. So in thanksgiving and praise, we offer a word of blessing for the gifts we receive today and the gifts that we receive in the week ahead until we gather. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer for the thanks of the gifts to be received? Almighty creator, you have blessed us with abundant life and steadfast love. We offer these gifts to you, asking that your Holy Spirit will bless them and use them to shower grace and love upon our brothers and sisters, both near and far. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. On the screen, you will have the communion liturgy that we will join together with. Again, reminder, those of you online, if you wish to receive them, I will be at the church until one today to distribute them to you. Would you join with me for the bold print when the time comes? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our, fit, our sins before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. I invite you to take a moment of silence at your seats for a moment of silent confession. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the same, the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body and blood of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Those of you in the sanctuary on your way out, as we have been doing, you will receive the cup and the, the wafer. Remember that the plastic piece that the top comes off to get the wafer and the juice is under the purple foil. Um, so you will receive those as you go out today. I invite you to rise as you are able for our closing song today, The Goodness of God. Mm -hmm.
Friends, go forth from this place and do just as you sung. Sing of the goodness of God. And as you go from this place, extend grace to all as you do that. And be faithful to Christ and do not lose hope. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.